Okay guys, it's time for some drills. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going through some puzzles. Um, they're all pins and you're gonna call out what the move is, whether it's a relative pin or absolute pin, okay? So let's get started. All right, so this one, okay, what have we got? The, the move is what? Rook E1, right? Rook E1. And that is an absolute pin because the queen, the king is in the uh, the king is in the pin, and so if the queen runs away, that's an illegal move, right? Absolute pin uh, after rook e1, white will win, right? This one, okay, black to move, black to move. What do we do? Look for two pieces on the same line. What is it? These guys, right? So bishop d5, right? Bishop d5 is the move. What type of pin is that? That's an absolute pin, right? Because the king is at the back of the pin. Right, what about this one? And uh, this is white to move. What's the move? We see the queen and the king on the same line, right? And so bishop b5 is the move, and the queen is pinned to the king, and what type of pin? Absolute pin, right? Excellent. Uh, this one, okay, so we can't um, pin anything straight away. Right now, the knight is in a pin. What type of pin? A relative pin, right? Because the knight can move out of the pin if it wants to. But it's white to move. White uh, temporarily gives up his rook for the knight. Very nice uh, plan, actually. Rook takes. It's strange, rook takes, but then we go bishop to d3, which is an absolute pin, right? The the bishop is pinned to the king, right? Let's go next. This one black to move. We see the king and the rook on the same line, quite similar to before. Bishop c7 pins the king to the rook with an absolute pin, right? Next one. Uh, white to move. All right, what two pieces do you see on the same line? You see these two on the same line and these two on the same line. So clearly queen d1 would be a stupid move because they take you, so that's not a pin, is it? All right, so queen a1, what about that? Oops, that's not a very straight line. So yes, we have a pin here and we're gonna get his rook for free. Nice pin. Next one. White right, to move, very easy. All right, rook d4, absolute pin, yes? Next one. This one, okay, so this one, we already have a pin, we already have an absolute pin, but we need to exploit it in this puzzle, right? So the way we exploit it is, what did we, what did we say in the last video? Um, method number two, right? Method number two is to attack it with a weaker piece, right? So we've attacked the knight with a weaker piece, and now we're going to take it and gain at least two points, right? Okay, so important method there. This one, it's black to move. We see uh, almost mirror image of a puzzle from a couple puzzles ago. Bishop b4 and absolute pin. The queen can't get out of it. We win, right? This one we already seen before this this idea, but let's see how it works. Bishop c7. He goes king f4, and now do we need to uh, take it straight away? No, we don't, because the king will take back. The best thing to do is to attack it again. Something you need to remember as well, if you attack it with more pieces, then they can't take back, right? And so he pushes or something, and we take, and we got the rule for free. So remember that detail as well. Okay, this one's white to move. What do we do? The king and queen are on the same line. Rook a8, protected by the bishop, and we pin the queen to the king, right? Next one. Uh-oh, black's threatening checkmate on h2. What are we going to do? Do we move our g pawn up? No, we don't. Rook e1, absolute pin, pins the queen, right? They can't checkmate us because the queen can't move, right? This one, okay, what do we do? This is a fairly even position, queen and knights each, but queen a4. What type of pin? Absolute pin, right? Pretty good for white. Uh, this one, a little bit higher than you think. There's lots happening. There's a lot happening on this diagonal, but the best thing we can do by force is to exchange queens. Check, he must take back, and bishop b7, in this rook to the king. What type of pin? Absolute pin, right? Next one. White to move. Okay, we can see this one pretty easily. The knight's defender, we can't pin that, but queen a4 pins the rook, and it's not the end of the story. He plays a6, defending his rook. Oh, what do we do then? If we take it, we're dumb, right? Because they take us back and we lose our queen. But method number two, we attack it with a less valuable piece. Now we get their rook, right? This one, a little bit fancy, um, we can take this pawn, right? Nice move, taking that pawn. Uh, and the point is that if the queen takes back, we can do an absolute pin and win their queen, right? Uh, this one, okay, so this one we already have a pin, see? This C pawn here is pinned, so white grabs this pawn on B4. It's a nice move, knight takes B4, exploiting this pin uh, because the, bish uh, the pawn um, can't defend his brother here on b4, right? Uh, 
um, this one. Uh, white can use a tactic to take this free pawn on e5, right? A lot of people might go rook e1 here or something if they hadn't noticed, but knight takes e5 is exploiting the fact that if the queen takes back, we have our familiar rook e1 pinning the queen to the king, right? Um, and that would be an absolute pin, right? This one, okay, we have a uh, pin already, the knight pinned. If we take it, that's bad. The bishop takes back and it's just three points for three points, right? But what can we do? We can attack it with a weaker piece. Method number two again, and we get the knight. Even if they attack our bishop, we take here, or even just take with the bishop and we win three points, right? Uh, okay, this one. Um, this knight is pinned, but if we take it straight away, the queen takes back. The best way to um, exploit this one is to pile up on it. We say pile up because we just attack it with everything. Like queen h4, now we have two pieces attacking the knight and they have one defending. So they defend. Now they have two defending, we have two attacking. So we attack it with another one. Now we have three attacking and they only have two defending. And so white will win, right? They will do something and then we'll be able to take here and they can't take back, right? So um, remember that idea too. You don't always need to take straight away. You can also pile up. I probably should have put that in the other ways to exploit a pin, right? But I guess it's similar to the other ones. Anyway, this one, we already have an absolute pin, right? So we can just attack the pin piece, right? And if he takes us, we insert rook takes d7 check. He must get out of check and we can take the queen. Okay, pretty good. That uh, means we have the absolute pin, but we uh, just exploited by attacking the queen, which can't move, right? Uh, okay, this one, black to move. He sees this here. Now, I've had students uh, suggest queen e4 here, pinning the rook, but it's not very good because they can play uh, some defensive move. Uh, for example, let's just say queen e3 maybe. Does that do the job? Oh, probably not. There's rook, rook f1 check, but and queen h4 mate or something. <laughs> but, um, okay, maybe they can go somewhere else. Hmm. Well, maybe queen, I don't think queen e4 is okay, but whatever. Um, queen g6 is the strongest move because they can't threaten any queen swaps or whatever. Maybe queen e4 is, is okay. Let me see that. Queen e4, let me just see what this guy says. The reason why I say that is because yeah, I think queen e4 is still good. Okay, fair enough. Um, anyway, queen e4 is good. Queen e6 is also good. The point is they can defend their um, their rook, but it's still pinned, right? So what do we do? We don't take it and lose points. We attack it with a lower value piece. The method number two that I pointed out before. Okay. Uh, this one, we already have two. Uh, we already have a pin here on the d file. We exploit it by taking on e6, right? That's um, method number three. We exploit the fact that uh, the defender can't take back, right? And now we have an extra pin and we're going to win material. If the pawn takes back, then we can take the queen. So we should take the e6, creates a new pin and exploits a current pin, which is pretty good, right? Um, this one, okay, we can just exchange knight for bishop. Knight takes, knight takes, and what do we got here? We've got a pin, or we've got a lineup, so we pin them. Etc. Right. These, these these are starting to get pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, you guys are starting to get the ideas, I assume. Okay. We this one black to move, similar to before. Um, lots of pieces on this. Oops. On this diagonal, so we take and they take and we pin, right? And the knight defends the bishop, so all is good, and we want some material, right? Um, okay. This one. Remember, I said um, a piece loses. Are uh, we attack squares that? Um, that can't be defended by the pin piece. So in this instance, this pawn on g6 is defending the h5 square, but it can't because it's pinned by this bishop. So we attack squares, check, and you see um, the pawn illegal, can't take back. This is the absolute pin, and so the king must move. And then we can checkmate with queen take g6, check, defended by the bishop, king moves, and queen here checkmate, right? So. We were using method number three there, right? 
Okay, this one kind of nice. Uh, we can sacrifice our queen. Check, king takes, and then we're exploiting again. That's the pawn can't take because of the pin here. So method number three again. So we can checkmate by exploiting the the lack of defense from that pawn, right? Um, this one's kind of cute. Um, we want to take his queen, but the knight will take back. So what we do is we just insert this check um, because when the king takes, suddenly the knight will be pinned, absolute pin, and then we can just take his queen for free, right? Knight can't take back. Pretty nice. Uh, this one, okay, big pile up on the D file, so we just start attacking it with weaker pieces, right? C4, and it's trouble, like knight moves, and then this bishop is still pinned, so C5, and we win material, right? The bishop can't take because it's absolute pin, right? And, okay, that's it. So, um, how did you go in those drills? Were you able to solve them before I blurted out the answer? Um, if you couldn't, never mind, because you're going to have some puzzles to do very soon for yourself. I just wanted to give you a whole bunch um, of pins in practice to um, give you, one, the um, some examples, and two, uh, to get you thinking consciously of relative, absolute, uh, what we're doing, like our ways of exploiting this type of thing, okay? So, hope you got that from that, and um, in the next video, I believe we will be uh, looking at some example illustrative games of pins in action, okay, so full games. Um, so, um, I'll catch you in that video, and stay tuned.